Hello MotoGP fans, welcome back to ZNGP today. As Honda wraps up one of its most challenging seasons in MotoGP, Alberto Puig reflects on the year and looks ahead to 2025. The brand is already making significant changes to prepare for a stronger comeback, including new additions to its team. MotoGP legend Jorge Lorenzo has shared his thoughts on the current state of the sport and the evolution of its top riders. In an interview with Tot Costa, Lorenzo discussed Marc Marquez's remarkable comeback, his own feelings about retirement, and the competition's future stars. MotoGP Championship leader Pecco Bagnaia has shared his thoughts on last weekend's Australian Grand Prix, where Marc Marquez's win prevented Jorge Martin from taking the full 25 points. Despite a challenging race, Bagnaia remained composed as the championship battle continues to heat up. MotoGP rookie Pedro Acosta is heading to Thailand for the upcoming Grand Prix, but his participation remains uncertain following a high side crash in Australia. This is reports on Acosta's condition and the plans for this weekend's race. Don't forget to click subscribe button and the bell icon for MotoGP news update. Alberto Puig didn't hold back when assessing Honda's 2024 MotoGP campaign. Despite significant effort, the results haven't matched expectations. Puig acknowledged the difficulties the team faced and admitted that their early season efforts didn't lead to the desired progress. We started the season with a new rider with Luca. We spent six or seven months trying a lot of things, trying to understand. And it was very hard. The results show the reality. Quote from Alberto Puig. However, Puig hinted that a turning point came at Mizano, where Honda identified a direction for future development. While improvements haven't yet shown in race results, he remains confident that the team is on the right track. The team's focus is already on 2025, with several key changes announced recently. Puig discussed the addition of two new test riders, Alex Espargaro and Takaki Nakagami both experienced racers who will help Honda in its development efforts. In the case of Alex Espargaro, he decided to retire, so we thought it was a good time to have his services, because he is a very experienced rider. He has done a great job with Aprilia, and he knows very well what he did, and that is important. These new additions will be crucial for Honda as they continue to search for solutions and refine their bike for the upcoming season. One of the most significant changes for Honda this year has been the departure of Marc Marquez, a rider who has defined much of the brand's recent success. Puig reflected on the impact of Marquez leaving the team, acknowledging the unique role he played at Honda. Marquez is not just a rider, he is a special rider. And when he leaves a team, or when he joins a team, he makes an impact. Despite losing one of their greatest champions, Puig emphasized that Honda is determined to move forward. The team is focused on rebuilding and returning to the top of MotoGP. Honda will not stop if a rider comes or goes. We were not happy, but at the same time we respect him. He won a lot for Honda. It is never easy to lose a champion, but we have to move forward. Looking ahead, Puig made it clear that Honda's ultimate goal is to return to winning ways. Despite the current setbacks, he expressed confidence in the team's ability to overcome the challenges and reclaim their place at the front of the grid. This is a winning team, we are used to winning. We are going through a difficult process, but the Honda spirit is that we never give up. The main objective is to win again, Puig concluded. With major changes already in motion, Honda is focused on returning stronger in 2025. Though they faced a tough season, their resolve to compete at the highest level remains unshaken. Jorge Lorenzo followed the recent Australian Grand Prix closely, where Marc Marquez secured his third victory with Ducati. It's been an incredible journey back to the top for Marquez, following an arm injury in 2020 that nearly ended his career. When you break a collarbone or a wrist, or a foot, an ankle, it's not the same as when you crush your vertebrae. When the spine is affected, it's a bigger deal. Quote from Jorge Lorenzo. Lorenzo praised Marquez's determination, 
highlighting the multiple surgeries Marquez endured in his quest to return to racing form. His switch from Honda to Ducati was crucial in reviving his career and putting him back in contention for championships. According to Lorenzo, while staying with Honda Repsol might have been the ideal situation for Marquez, the risk of remaining with a struggling team outweighed the rewards. Marquez chose sporting success over his existing contract, breaking his long-standing relationship with Honda to join Ducati. In the end he reached a point where staying at Honda meant taking a lot of risk for very little reward. So he made the balance between money and sporting success, and at that moment sporting success weighed much more. Lorenzo spoke about Marquez's unique riding style, calling him the rider least afraid of falling, a factor that makes him a formidable opponent on the track. Fighting with a rival like that, who is so little afraid of falling, is complicated. However, Lorenzo acknowledged that even a rider of Marquez's caliber isn't immune to the physical toll of injuries and aging, placing him among the sport's all-time greats who eventually had to face these challenges. As Marquez continues to push for more championships, Lorenzo pointed out the generational shift underway in MotoGP. He fondly remembered the era of the Fantastic Four, Pedrosa, Stoner, Rossi, and himself, but noted that today's crop of top riders lacks the same level of charisma, aside from Marquez. I also see Acosta as very good at the level of communication, he is very natural and very spontaneous, but I don't know why Martin and Banyaya have not been appreciated as much in terms of charisma. As the championship battle between Jorge Martin and Peko Banyaya heats up, Lorenzo voiced his support for Martin, who will join Aprilia next season. He feels that Martin's move to a new team may mean this is his best shot at a MotoGP title. For me, Banyaya and Martin are very evenly matched in terms of speed and level as riders, and for Banyaya to have three titles and Martin zero, for me it would be unfair. Lorenzo also noted that Martin was unlucky to face competition from Marquez when Ducati was forced to choose between signing one of the two. Marquez's reputation and history of success made it difficult for Ducati to pass up the opportunity. When you make Ducati choose between Marquez, who has eight titles and is such a special rider, and Martin, Martin came out at a disadvantage. Lorenzo concluded. Jorge Lorenzo's insight into the current and future landscape of MotoGP highlights the challenges and opportunities facing the sport's top riders. As the season nears its end, the focus remains on the intense battle between Martin and Banyaya, while Marc Marquez's resurgence continues to shape the sport. Peko Banyaya faced a tough race at Phillip Island, finishing third behind Marquez and Jorge Martin. While some believe Marquez's victory indirectly helped Banyaya by denying Martin maximum points, Banyaya downplayed the notion that Marquez's win was motivated by past events. Did Mark do me a favor? I ask him now. I think he just wanted to win, he had the chance and he did it. I don't think he was thinking about 2015. Quote from Peko Banyaya. Despite finishing on the podium, Banyaya knows that every race counts, especially as his lead in the championship narrows, with Martin now only 20 points behind. Banyaya's third place finish wasn't without its difficulties. The Ducati rider admitted that Saturday's setup changes left him struggling during the race. Although he found some improvements during the warm-up, they came too late to make a significant impact. Unfortunately, on Saturday we lost our way a bit. I pushed hard with the front tire, and after 15 laps, I had run out of it. Then I started using the rear, and it ran out as well. In the last laps, I was really in trouble. Despite the challenges, Banyaya remains optimistic about the outcome, knowing that a third-place finish on a track that hasn't always suited him is still a good result. He emphasized that the upcoming races in Thailand and Malaysia should play more to his strengths. It was important to be able to close the gap a little on a track that is not ideal for me. Burum and Sepping suit my riding style better, and I think I will be stronger. Banyaya believes that he'll have a better chance at those circuits confident that he can build on his momentum. Banyaya acknowledged that mistakes have weighed heavily on his season, including a crash involving Alex Marquez earlier in the year. Still, 
He remains confident in his ability to fight for podium finishes in every race, knowing that the championship could go down to the wire. My mistakes, the races in which I crashed, everything counts. It is useless to think about it. When everything goes well, I am at the front, my potential is to fight for the podium in every race. Banyaya also touched on a lighter moment from the start of the race, where Mark Marquez's tear-off visor caused some chaos on the grid. Banyaya had to quickly maneuver around it, noting the informal agreement among riders not to pull tear-offs on the grid after a similar incident in 2020. Between us, the riders, we told ourselves not to pull off the start on the grid after Miller's problem at Mizano in 2020. But it's not a rule, Banyaya concluded. Peko Banyaya's third place finish at Phillip Island keeps him in the championship lead, but with only a 20 point gap, the fight is far from over. As the MotoGP season heads to Thailand and Malaysia, all eyes will be on Banyaya and Martin as they continue their battle for the title. After a serious crash during the sprint race at Phillip Island, Pedro Acosta's status for the Thai Grand Prix is in question. Although the rookie avoided any fractures, he's been dealing with significant pain in his left shoulder, leading him to miss Sunday's race in Australia. Now, as he travels to Burem, Acosta is focused on recovery, but he must undergo a medical check on Thursday to determine whether he can race. I'm slowly getting better. I'm still a bit sore but things are looking up. I'll have to undergo a medical checkup to see if I'm fit or not, but if I am, we'll face another weekend with the same enthusiasm and the same work that we've been doing these last few months." Quote from Pedro Acosta Despite three consecutive falls in the past events, Acosta remains optimistic and hopes to get back into the points this weekend. While Acosta faces a physical challenge, his teammate Augusto Fernandez also has his sights set on Burem after a mixed weekend in Australia. Fernandez secured his first sprint race points since her race, but a disappointing 17th place finish in Sunday's race left him wanting more. The Spaniard is eager to bounce back on a track that has suited KTM riders in the past. Sunday's race in Australia was tough and below expectations after a pretty good sprint on Saturday. I'm already looking forward to another week of racing in Thailand to try again. Quote from Augusto Fernandez. With Burem's stop-and-go layout working well for KTM bikes in past seasons, Fernandez is hopeful that he can improve his performance this weekend. Gasca's KTM team manager Nicholas Goyen remains optimistic ahead of the Thai Grand Prix, pointing out the circuit's favorable characteristics for their bikes. Both Brad Binder and Miguel Oliveira have had strong showings at Burem in recent years, and Goyen believes that the team's rookies, Acosta and Fernandez, can find success here too. The track at Burem is well suited to our bikes. Acosta's condition will be crucial to deciding his fitness for the Thai GP. As for Augusto, he showed positive signs in Q2 last year, and if he can build on those late improvements in braking, we expect better results this weekend. Quote from Nicholas Goyen. With the medical check looming, Pedro Acosta's participation in the Thai Grand Prix hangs in the balance. Meanwhile, Augusto Fernandez is determined to improve his form after a challenging race in Australia. All eyes will be on Burem this weekend as the Gaskas KTM team looks to make a strong showing. Thanks for watching ZNGP today, and this is your MotoGP news update. See you in the next video.